Hey everyone, how you doing today? It's me, David, Jersey Boy Music. I'm in the Beatles corner, which of course means we are collecting the Beatles 101. And today we're going to dive into another one of the American albums. It's this one, the Beatles' second album. So stick around. Let's talk a little bit about this record album over here. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back to the shoe. The shoe. Yes, the shoe. Um, so released April the 10th of 1964. I wouldn't say that this album, the Beatles second album, which is actually the Beatles third U.S. album. Shame on you, Capitol Records, for trying to mislead and do some revisionist history because we all know VJ released Introducing the Beatles like 10 days before Meet the Beatles is released. So this is actually Capitol's second Beatles album. <laughs> is it confusing yet? I hope not. So, um, anywho, um, Meet the Beatles, and I talked about Meet the Beatles in an earlier video on the channel. Meet the Beatles was released January 20th. I feel like I'm askew. Um, January 20th of 1964. So almost three months later, Capitol released this, the Beatles' second album. Um, so the interesting and cool thing about Meet the Beatles was that of the 12 songs on the album, 11 of them were original Beatles compositions with one cover song, which was Till There Was You. Um, so the Beatles' second album collects the rest of the songs that was on with the Beatles that didn't make it to meet the Beatles. And those songs are... Do -do -do -do, um, Please, Mr. Postman. Roll Over Beethoven. You Really Got a Hold on Me. Uh, Devil in Her Heart and money so those made it and of course those um those songs were covers were they all covers yeah they were all covers so those those cover songs that were on with the beatles put that over here on the shelf it is on my shelf um made it to the beatles second album now of course those six songs couldn't fill out an album so to round out the rest of the album on here was thank you girl which um interesting the stereo mix on this album uh had a harmonica little harmonica th bridge that did not appear on the mono or the british version of the song um then we've got you can't do that Another Lennon McCartney original, which was the flip side of Can't Buy Me Love, which was released that, I believe that same month in April of 64. Can't Be, Buy Me Love, of course, made it onto the United Artists Hard Day's Night album, since it was in the film A Hard Day's Night. Long Tall Sally um, actually was another cover that, so five, anyway. Uh, that and the next song, I Call Your Name, were on the Long Tall Sally EP in England. And interesting, I Call Your Name has another slightly different mix. I think on the stereo version, the cowbell comes on when John starts singing the initial first verse. Uh, and I've heard, like, I can swear I heard th I've heard three different variations of this song each with the cowbell starting in different spots um, but I can cover those variations later on in another segment on the channel and then we've got the she loves you single backed with I I'll I'll get you in the end um, which was on the swan label so now here capital has commandeered that single and put it on an album, wrenching it away from the clutches of Swan Records. And um, 
all songs are, I believe, in in stereo. Um, she loves you, and I'll get you. Of course, no stereo masters had existed, so the fine folks at Capitol Records, headed by Dave Dexter, had taken the mono and rechanneled it into duophonic, echo laden stereo, and um, so interestingly, like you know, the norm of the Dave Dexter reproduced um, Beatles albums. This album is got the echo drenched reverb laden sound to it, which I don't believe was really as emphasized on Meet the Beatles. This gave the album more of a live feel to it, not like a live concert live feel, but um, more of a live feel um, in the sound, which is actually really nice because this album, except for one song, is really a lot of upbeat rock and roll numbers. Um, you Really Got a Hold On Me is more of the, the only ballad that's on the album. And, you know, even the, uh, the front cover, especially the font up here, really, to me, harkens to that um, the concert poster type of feel um, to the cover with the photo montage of those lads from Liverpool and then carrying on to the, I'm not going to do a close-up, I'm just showing it to you like this. The back cover, again, video montage primarily from the Ed Sullivan Show appearance and this one's probably from, you know, the uh, Washington DC concert. So, here we have electrifying big beat performances by those lads from Liverpool, the Beatles. And, um, oh, and then also probably an incentive, an impetu impetuous, I don't know, incentive to get this released. You notice prominently displaying She Loves You, which a hit single. And then why was Rollover Beethoven part of this hype on the cover? Well, I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Up in Canada, Capitol Records of Canada released Rollover Beethoven as a single and demand for, just like any Beatles product, especially the music, demand for that song, which was unreleased at the time here in the States. You know, the kids here in the States were like, hey, we're missing out on something over here. And I think people were just... Hey, crossing the border getting copies of that single uh, for their family and friends. DJs here in the States were playing it. So Capitol said, you know what, we're going to put it on the Beatles second album and we are going to make sure them kids darn well know that that song's on the album. So there you have it. 11 great big beat songs, electrifying performances. And you know, it is in my opinion, overall, a really cool album. Um, because it's so heavy with cover songs, to me, I mean, it's a good album. Is it one I'm going to pick up and listen to? Eh, once in a while. But um, not a real cohesive Beatles album, as it were. Meet the Beatles, really cohesive. And the Something New album, uh, which followed this one. Again, a pretty cohesive album because the songs from those albums were culled from a single album, pretty much in England. Um, so it had so some of the albums have more cohesiveness. This one just sounds like a mishmash of different songs thrown together. But hey, it made money for Capital. It kept the Beatlemania train rolling, and uh, kids everywhere were happy to get. 11 new songs to them, new songs from the Beatles. So there you go. A um, little bit about that. What are your thoughts? If, you, if you're if you from another country or you haven't really listened to it, I don't need to hear about how Capital butchered the albums, all right? Just if you grew up listening to this album, what are your thoughts and memories of it? Uh, does it still hold well for you? Is it a good collection of songs or... yeah. You can, you can pass it by. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments. So until next time, it's me, David. Jersey Boy Music. If you're looking for uh, vintage vinyl, 
visit my eBay store at jerseyboymusic.net and hopefully I have something there that you would enjoy adding to your own collection for a nominal fee, of course. But uh, until next time, I will catch you on the flip side and thanks so much for watching. Thank you.